Hi, I'm Hans Wilhelm. Many people know that we have a soul pulsating in our physical body. But very few are aware of the fact that this soul wants to communicate with us. What does our soul want to tell us? What is the language of our soul? Let's find out now. Our soul is invisible to us and we can only see its shell, our physical body, which is matter. As we have seen in many of my videos, the human being with its physical body came into being through the fall, the separation from the absolute seven-dimensional reality. This caused the fine substance of light ether of these divine beings that we are all once were to condense and transform down into matter. And matter is part of the three-dimensional reality that we now live in. But not all matter is the same. The consistency of the human material body depends very much on the person's orientation. If it is to the divine, the physical body gradually becomes finer and lighter. In contrast, people who have turned away from the divine are having a much coarser and denser physical body. It all depends on where our heart is. As I said, our soul, which is made up of spiritual particles, lives inside this shell or vehicle of matter, which is made of physical atoms. But for the purpose of this video, I will draw the soul separate. Our soul remembers and deeply longs to return home to the absolute reality from where we all came. Our soul wishes to communicate with us so that we return back and focus on the love for God and our neighbor instead being stuck here in our crazy and exhausting ego world. But our soul does not have thoughts or words to communicate with. Instead, it makes itself noticeable via the sounding board of our feelings because feelings are the switching points between the soul and the physical body. So here we have the feelings. And now the soul communicates via the corresponding moods that result from the feelings. Interesting, isn't it? Throughout the day we have so many different moods, don't we? They often depend on what we see, hear, smell, taste or touch. So with all these external impressions we receive through our five senses, our soul responds via feelings and expresses itself in the corresponding moods. And moods are the soil from which thoughts sprout and give these moods their names like sad, grumpy, mad, happy and so on. And thoughts can help us to explore the origin of our mood and how to change them. A typical example is when we wake up in the morning. We may either be in a good or bad mood. They come from our soul via our feelings. The moods first have their images and with our thoughts we can learn their meaning, like what is important for us today. That is a message from our soul. For instance, a dream can also convey moods to our subconscious and conscious mind. If we still have some images from the dream, what moods come from the dream? Dreams are mostly symbolic and can be composed of many different situations, but the mood comes from a particular aspect of a dream, and that aspect may be of help and guidance for the day. So our feelings convey to us in moods the message for the day. Therefore, we should always try to explore what our moods are trying to convey to us. Think of all the different moods we have throughout the day. From joy to sorrow, fear or worry, inhibitions and compulsions to boredom and listlessness. A typical example is a so-called uneasy feeling that we can sense in our solar plexus in the central nervous system. This is often an admonishment or a wake-up call from our soul. But here's the thing, it is not only the, our soul that tries to get our attention and communicates via moods. Our conscience does it too. Think about when we are, for instance, fearful of something, feel anxiety, feel threatened, or we feel that we have said or even done something that we know was wrong and could possibly become harmful to us and others. These are the pangs of conscience. 
our soul and conscience prompt us to break down the mood in the conscious mind to look at the thoughts that we have and figure out what needs to be remedied. And then there are all the things that happen to us every day. We know that there are no accidents and throughout the day we mostly experience all the unloving thoughts, words and deeds that we have once uploaded and stored into the cosmic causal computer of the stars and planets and which are now coming back to us as karma. Please see my video that explains why our life here on Earth is on rewind. These daily big and small challenges cause our constantly changing feelings and moods throughout the day. And everything that comes out of our soul, positive or negative, is therefore ultimately we ourselves. But here are two other important aspects that always put us in negative moods. One of them are all our expectations that we constantly put on other people or on life, on God or even on ourselves. We want something for ourselves and ultimately at the expense of the energy of other people. Expectations means overriding the free will of others and thereby stealing their energy. Heavenly, divine love never expects anything from anyone. It always respects the free will of everyone. It also never judges or condemns. And our judgments are the other painful aspect that keeps us in bad moods because our ego constantly wants to prove to ourselves and others that we are better than they are. Therefore, many think that in our busy and highly competitive world feelings are a sign of weakness. But anybody who turns off their feeling is also turning off their soul and conscience. And the result is a totally self-centered egoistic way of life. It may give the person some temporarily worldly advantages, but no happiness in the long run. Therefore, instead of pushing our feelings and moods aside, it is better to look at them, embrace them and, yes, even try to love them. I gave an example how this helped me in my own life in my TEDx talk on boredom. So now we see why it is so important to explore our moods, our feelings through constant self-monitoring. Particularly those uneasy feelings where there is something coming up in us and wants to tell us something. We do not know exactly what we are feeling, but this feeling enters our world of thoughts. Gabriele suggests to ask, what is in my thoughts? And ask Christ for help and then an impulse comes from the very basis of the soul. Pictures open in us, more thoughts open, and we know what lies behind our thoughts. The more we explore what is going on underneath in us and clear it up and stop doing it, the more our consciousness expands and we learn to understand other people and ourselves. Now you may wonder from where I got all this information. It was inspired by a lesson given to us by Gabriele in the year 2007. It is one of many lessons in this wonderful book called The True School is Life. Volume 1. A link to this book with more information you will find under this video. By the way, allow me to share with you that around the world many people are now coming together in small groups, either in person or via Zoom or phone, to study this and many other books of the mystical path that were given to us for the last 50 years. I am part myself of such a little group and I enjoy it very, very much. Here everybody can share their understanding and experiences of how this material has changed and touched their lives. As there are no teachers in these groups, everybody's input is equally valued and appreciated. Maybe you know of some friends who may be interested in starting such a similar study group to get to the deep wisdom of these books. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so now. And I see you in my next video.